the officer interviewing him said, you know, this this really sounds like a con game here. <laughs> Um, but they said, you know, no, 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 no. This is like, I'm getting paid my money. So it's not a con game. Let me tell you, this stuff absolutely sounds like a con <laughs> game to me. It sounds like you take a thousand dollars from, from a guy. You take a thousand dollars from the second guy. You give 300 of the second thousand to the first guy. And you just keep getting more guys. We call that a Ponzi scheme. You're right. Like that's like you, you said in there. None of these people had actually tried to get their money back, right? Right. So you don't really know if he might have just been able to bring give them their money. Maybe he is winning horses 98% of the time, yeah. and he's just sitting on a huge pile of cash. Yeah. And no, none of the, his investors are asking for their money back yet, so he's just compounding it. We don't it, know that. Yeah. But it does sound like it could very well be a Ponzi scheme, it, too. It's, <laughs> that's how it sounds to me, but we don't know. We don't know what ends up happening. And although he was not investigated for this, I should point out that my understanding, and somebody can definitely correct me, but my understanding of the law here is if he's taking a bet from these guys in Racine and then going down to Chicago and betting on the horses, that That, in itself is illegal. Yeah, probably. Because he's he's carrying a wager across, which is... So dumb because the way you're like, it's not even like a physical thing. You're but- right. You're right, Gavin. But at the same time, I mean, they could just say, well, no, I, I wasn't carrying his bet across state lines. I was just carrying, he borrowed me money. Yeah. And and I'm sure that's not illegal. And they can't really argue that. Right. You know, they can't, unless he like was writing out documents that clearly stated this was for betting. A- absolutely. I yeah. Like, so- I think strictly speaking, it would be illegal, but it would be really hard to prove it because yeah. like. If you just say, hey, if you go down to the track today, could you throw 50 bucks on a horse for me? It's really hard to prove that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the FBI interviewed a man named Fred Klanknick. And sorry, Mr. Klanknick, <laughs> if that's not accurate. So, it does not sound very accurate. <laughs> but it's what it looks like. So that's what it looks like. K-L-A-N-C-N-I-K. Klanknick. Okay. That, can't ar- argue with that one. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the FBI interviewed him about Gus. Uh, he said that he had known Gus for many years because they were both in the dry cleaning business. Klanknick said that he was unemployed for a while when Marzullo invited him to work for the dry cleaning business in Milwaukee. While there, the paychecks were signed by Steve DeSelva. He had heard that Buster Balistrieri and Joseph Guerrero had an interest, but they were not the ones that signed his checks. Klanknick said the business was completely legitimate as far as he knew, and in fact, it was rather successful because it had primarily commercial accounts, meaning they were dry cleaning like hotels and businesses that would need that sort of thing. They had one Ford Econoline van, which was registered in Klanknick's name. He had never seen anything related to gambling on the property. Nothing super weird there, except if you're a super successful business, and all you have is one van, and it's in your employee's name. <laughs> that, of that's a little weird. Name. Yeah, I would agree. That's not. That doesn't sound to me like a super successful business. <laughs> that's a little bizarre. Yes. Yeah, I would agree with you. But, but maybe now again, when is this? Sixty-two. Eh, maybe that was normal. Maybe, maybe that was normal. Maybe dry cleaners. You know, you people use their own vehicles to carry to transport. The drivers had to use their own vehicles. Yes. You know. Yes. Papa John's is a very successful pizza place, but they that don't have any any of their own vehicles. They just use their employees' vehicles. That is absolutely true. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah. February 1963, less than a year after they take over the dry cleaning business, the IRS padlocks the dry cleaning business for failure to pay withholding taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. I feel like we've heard this story before. <laughs> yes. And that's the last we hear... Of the dry cleaning business. <laughs> <laughs> the door never gets unlocked again, huh? Apparently, they, they pay it, they get it unlocked, but that's it. Then it's, they just apparently just don't continue with business after that. They just clear the, clear their debts and they're done. I don't know. <laughs> Did they just say, we'll try something else? Did, I don't know. Whatever happened, it's, they ran this for about a year and they were like, nope, we're done. We're done. 
this seems like an ongoing theme during this time is is that they just kind of jump onto something, ride it for a little while, and then just quit. Yeah. Well, usually it ends up badly, and then they it gets all busted up. Yeah, this is relatively minor. I don't know what the amount of the taxes they owed was. I can't imagine it's like that much Mm -hmm. because it doesn't seem like they had a lot of people working for them. But either way, our main guy this time, Gus, Gus Marzullo, died in Milwaukee, August 1978. In his early life, his wife's name was Julia. Later on, his wife's name was Helen. I don't think his wife changed her name. (laughs) So so apparently uh, at some point his wife either died or they divorced and he got remarried. You really um, set that up well. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is on like the records. On some records, his wife listed as Helen, and sometimes it's Julia. And I don't think that's the same person. I, I don't think so either. But I couldn't find any record of her dying or, or right. divorce. He had no children. So yeah, after the striking business goes under, never hear of Gus again. It's really interesting because when you listen to the story, so now I said earlier that I think, well, there's no way... Gus could have not known that this was going on in the dry cleaner. Yeah. But then you just talked about that Clinknick guy. Yeah. He, they even interviewed him and asked him, like, yeah. did you ever see gambling going on? And he said no. So maybe they were clever about this, that this Clink, this other, yeah. the Gus might not have ever known that this was even going on. It's possible. I mean, there wasn't any gambling happening there. Right. They were just it was collecting ju- the money. Right. Which you still would figure, like, why are all these people walking in here with, yeah, you know, and paying something when they're not, you know, yeah, but maybe they just had a clever system, that maybe could, they did. It I could escape the guy pure completely. I, I have my doubts. I mean, I would find it more believable that the guy knew what was going on and didn't care then the guy didn't have any idea. Yeah, yeah, and I think I would lean that direction, too. Just because I do, he obviously was a very avid gambler. For them to say, like, well, we have people coming in here and paying for gambling bets or whatever, he probably, that's in his mind, that's probably like, I don't care about that because I like gambling. So, yeah. So yeah. Like, he probably realized it was illegal, but he didn't, it was one of those things where... Yeah. He thought it was dummy legal, so he was like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. I think that this character, in my opinion, he falls under to one of those characters, and I think we talked about it on the last last podcast, where mm. every once in a while the mafia needs somebody that's yeah. kind of on the outside, and I think this guy more or less falls into that, yes. that category, where he was not directly tied, did not honestly have any relationship with the mafia other than the fact that he was a manager at a business they owned. I absolutely agree. I I don't think there's anything really going on with, with Gus Marzullo. He's just, it's just the face of the business, but you you know, that's why you got to look into these things. But yeah, based on what I know, I would give him a pass. I would say you're okay. You're all right. And you did, did you research enough to find out did once they bought this laundromat, Mm -hmm. Did they hire this guy, or did this guy come along with the laundromat? I don't think he was already there. Or, you know, okay. I don't believe so. It wasn't. It wasn't completely clear, um, because you know they bought it after it was in receivership. But I didn't get the impression that it was Gus's store that they bought. Mm-hmm. Or I, but, I, but I, I, I believe they hired him on. They hired him on, and I'm my gut would go towards that. One of them had a relationship with him from gambling yeah, and said, hey, I know you got experience in this. We've just bought a business. Would you be interested in running it? And he probably just said, sure. Yeah. So, And if anybody knows anything more, let me know. But that's the story as I know it. Who was Gus Marzullo? Just some guy. Just some guy? Just some Vandal- guy who who was in dry cleaning business and, and liked betting on horses. Yeah. <laughs> and was probably ripping off his friends, but <laughs> but we don't know. We don't know. He claimed to have a, what was it, 97% success rate? 97% success rate on betting on horses, which pretty sure is impossible. Possible, yeah. <laughs> I, wish, I, wish, I wish there was a way that we could, like, see that. Yeah. Like, like if, like, all bet, horse betting races was public knowledge or something that you yeah. think, see what this guy bid on and see if he was how yeah. often he was winning but yeah i don't know how you could pull that off all right well i don't have anything else so i think we can wrap this episode yeah up. that's it oh. this one's this one can be pretty short because it's not a, like a not a major scheme or anything just a little piece Look. of the giant 
You know, you, you find you find little stories everywhere. Right. This is just a little one.